The Formula One Turbo and the MGUH. How do they work? This is the second episode of a series of six videos about the Formula One power unit. I link the playlist below. Make sure to watch them all. So before talking about the Formula One Turbo, we need to understand what's the purpose of a turbocharger in a car. If we look at the name, we understand that the turbocharger is made of two components. We have the turbo, or rather the turbine, and the compressor. So which is the most important one? None of them, because both of them are super important. So let's start with the compressor. As you already know from the first episode, the engine needs air to work properly. And the more air we put inside the engine, the more powerful the engine can be. But what if we want to put more air inside the cylinder? Well, the way it's pretty simple. If we compress the air, we can put more air inside the cylinder. So let me make an example. Imagine that you have a cube in front of you. That cube is your engine. Now, for simplicity, let's imagine that in normal conditions, inside that cube, we have four cubes of air. And let's imagine that each cube of air can burn one drop of fuel. Obviously, this is just an example. The real proportions are different. Now, imagine taking that cube of air and squeezing it. The cubes are now smaller, and in that engine, we can fit nine cubes instead of four. So that means that we'll be able to burn nine drops of fuel and therefore make the engine more powerful. So this is the concept that makes you understand very remotely how the compressor works. The compressor compresses the air and makes the engine more powerful. So how are these compressors made? They look like, do you know the, the, the children's pinwheels? You know, the ones that you blow and they start spinning. So the compressor works in reverse. It's not you that blows and makes it spin, but it's that it spins and blows the air. Actually, it compresses the air and pushes it into the cylinder. So the idea behind the turbo compressor is that you can get more power from the same engine without adding cylinders. Because just to simplify, if a four cylinder engine delivers 100 horsepower, if you wanna get more power, you should add more cylinders. And instead of modifying the engine, you can just add a turbocharger to get more horsepower. And just to give you an idea, without considering the electric motors, a Formula One engine with just six cylinders for a total amount of 1600 cc can deliver 837 horsepower. While the old eight cylinders, so with two more cylinders and a bigger displacement, could deliver only 740 horsepower because they didn't have a turbocharger. But there's one problem. And the problem is that when it compresses the air, the air heats up. And if it heats up, it becomes less dense. So you are compressing some air, so you're losing efficiency. Therefore, the effect of compressing the air in part is lost. So what do we do? We cool down the air to make it again dense. And to do that, we need a dedicated radiator, which is called intercooler. And just think that in the 80s, the Formula One qualifying engines, yeah, you got it right, they were using engines only for the qualifying, and the BMW engine with only four cylinders was able to reach 1400 horsepower. And that was because he had a gigantic compressor. Obviously the engine used to blow up after a few kilometers, but it doesn't matter because they used it only for the qualifying. And the engine used to break because the compressor was struggling a lot, but more than him, what was really struggling was the turbine. Yeah, because how does the compressor spin? Where does it take the energy? Well, it depends because in automotive there are two types of compressors, which are both used in nowadays cars. The first one is the volumetric compressor. This compressor is connected to the crankshaft, which is the part of the engine that the pistons make move. So the rotation of the crankshaft powers the supercharger. And just think that already in 1930s, the Audi was already using a volumetric compressor. However, the volumetric compressor has a problem. And the problem is that in order to make the compressor spin, you're taking away power from the engine. Because part of the power that the engine produces is used to make the compressor spin. So this is not acceptable in Formula One. That's why in Formula One they use the second type, which is the turbocharger. The idea behind the turbocharger is very simple. So do you remember the pinwheel? So in a turbocharger there are two pinwheels. We have the compressor pinwheel and we have the turbine pinwheel, which are connected by a shaft. So if the turbine spins, also the compressor spins. So who makes the turbine spin? The answer is the engine exhaust gases, which is a great way to make it spin because that's energy that we were throwing away. So instead of throwing away those gases, we use them to make the turbine spin, which makes spin the compressor, which compresses the air and makes the engine more powerful. Why was the volumetric compressor ever invented? 
And why is it used nowadays in road cars? Well, the answer is simple. The volumetric compressor is cheaper and stronger, while the turbocharger is more expensive and more delicate, especially because the turbine reaches temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. So it's built with very expensive materials. So we can use this chart to visualize the differences. The volumetric is simple and cheaper, and it has no turbo lag, which is something we will discuss in a few minutes, but it takes horsepower away from the engine. While the turbocharger, it doesn't deprive the engine from horsepowers, but it's more delicate, more expensive, and has turbo lag. So this is how a turbocharger works, but how does it work in Formula One? And what is the MGUH? So the turbocharger, as we just saw, has two problems. The first of them is the turbo lag. What is the turbo lag? The turbo lag happens when you're not accelerating. So for example, lifting or braking. And what happens when the engine doesn't push? It happens that the turbine slows down. And just to give you an idea, the turbines rotate really fast. For example, in Formula One, they go over 100,000 RPMs. So when you're in this condition, what happens when you start accelerating again? It happens that the engine's rev go up, more exhaust gases are produced, the turbine starts to spin fast again, the compressor therefore starts to spin. The problem is that from the moment you start accelerating to the moment you get the extra power, some time has passed, and that time is called turbo lag. We're talking about a delay in the turbocharging of a few tenths of a second, and tenth of a second in Formula One is everything. So this was the first problem, the turbo lag. While the second problem of the turbo is that the turbocharger cannot recover all the energy from the exhaust gases. So it's not an actual problem, it's just an optimization problem. The exhaust gases make the turbine spin. The turbine makes the compressor spin, which blows more air into the engine, which burns more fuel, creates more power, creates more exhaust gases, which make the turbine spin faster, which make the compressor spin faster. As you can see, this is a positive feedback loop which makes the turbine spin faster and faster. And if that keeps spinning faster and faster, it will blow up. So you have to put a limit on the turbine. Well, very simply, when the turbine hits the limit, a valve opens, which vents out the excess exhaust gas. That valve is called Westgate. But we are in Formula One. We don't want to waste energy. So what do we do? Here comes the MGUH. The MGUH is an electric motor which solves these two problems. And listen to this because this is pure genius. First of all, it eliminates the turbo lag. And how does it do that? If you remember, the turbo lag happens because the turbine takes time to start spinning again. So in that moment, the MGUH takes energy from the battery and makes spin the turbine, anticipating the exhaust gases and therefore almost totally eliminating the turbo lag. So first problem solved. And what about the second? The second function of the MGUH comes into place when we are supposed to open the Westgate valve. So instead of opening the Westgate to prevent the turbine to spin too fast, we keep the Westgate closed and we slow down the turbine. So the MGUH slows down the turbine and generates electricity, which can be sent to the battery to recharge it. Okay, but you're probably wondering if the Westgate became useless now, why is it still there in Formula 1? We will see it in the fifth video because it's quite complicated. And we will also see that the MGUH does not send the energy only to the battery, but it does some other magical stuff. So as you understood until now, we have three components. We have the turbine, we have the compressor, and we have the MGUH. Considering that all of these three components need to be connected, they have to be very close to each other. But one of the biggest problems in Formula One is space. There is no space inside the car. So what do we do? Well, we have three options. Classic option, the turbine and the compressor are close to each other, out of the V engine, gearbox side, as you can see from the drawing. We, we can say that this is a classic arrangement of the sports car, like for example, the Formula 2, and the MGUH is placed in the middle of the V engine, exactly between the cylinders, okay? Which saves space and is basically the most sensible position. Then we have a second option, which is the split turbo. This is pure genius from Mercedes. So basically the Mercedes technician invented to separate the three components. So the turbine is outside the V on the gearbox side, the MGUH is inside the V between the cylinders, and the supercharger is outside the V but on the other side, which means to the driver's side. So in practice they split the turbo in two, 
This solution is pure brilliant because you can have a compressor that works away from the turbine, therefore works away from the heat of the turbine, and therefore is more performing. Not only, you also have more space, so you can put a bigger turbine and a bigger compressor. Obviously, as always, it's not all roses, because the main problem of this solution is that it's hard to make the connections between the components because the distances are longer and therefore it's hard to make it reliable. But this is not over because we have a third option, which is called size zero. We have the turbine outside the V of the engines in the usual position, which is gearbox side. And then we have the MGOH and the compressor inside the V of the cylinders. It's called the size zero because it makes the engine very small and very compressed and it was used only by Honda in 2015 and 2016. But some people say that also Ferrari is using it nowadays and we'll get there soon. This solution has many advantages, but it has a flaw, which is that putting the compressor inside the V of the cylinders forces you to have a smaller compressor. And what's the drawback of a small compressor? Is that in those tracks where the air is less compressed, like in Mexico, where they race at 2,200 meters altitude, the compressor has to work more to compress the air. And because it's smaller, he has to spin faster. But if it spins too fast, it risks breaking. So the question is, why would they choose an architecture like this? Well, first of all, because of the size, and second of all, because of efficiency and agility. A smaller compressor is more agile, it takes less energy to spin, and therefore out of the corners, the response is more prompt. So a small turbo has less turbo lag, it requires less intervention from the MGUH, and drains the battery less. On the other hand, a large turbocharger is less prompt in the response, but can compress the air more and can also have a wider range of use. In short, as in every design choice, it's always a compromise. And in this table, you can see the summary of the engine architectures chosen in the last years. Renault, Mercedes and Honda, they all have split turbo, while Ferrari is not known for sure, but they think that have the option size zero. So, did you like the video? Let me know in the comment below. Subscribe to the channel because the third episode is coming out soon. And in that episode, we will talk about the MGK and we will go in detail of the MGUH.